let's chat a bit about the world of prosthetics because as with everything these days, I'm constantly reminded that we are already living in the quote unquote future. Uh, I figured this was so far off in the distance when I was a kid, but Jonathan, you followed a project that at this point is 10 years in the making. It looks like it's about to see the light of day. Tell us a little bit about the Luke arm prosthetic. Yeah, this is a, something I've been following almost the entire time this has been a story. So back in 2005, 2006, the Department of Defense approached Dean Kamen, uh, better known as the guy who invented the Segway, as well as mm -hmm. tons of other stuff. Um, and they said that they were looking into trying to develop a, a robotic prosthetic for arms to better give people who have lost an arm, uh, specifically the military, uh, people in the military who have lost an arm in the, the process of serving in the military, uh, so to regain some some of their their mobility and their independence, uh, be able to do things that most of us take for granted. And they gave Dean Kamen some um, very specific parameters saying that they wanted this to be no heavier than the average human arm. So that's already a big, yeah. a big ticket thing. Uh, they wanted it to be able to differentiate uh, the amount of pressure that you use to grip something. Um, they wanted it to be uh, uh, have as, as many degrees of freedom as you possibly could get to, to equate that of a human arm, which is also pretty tricky. And Dean Kamen's response at first was, you're crazy. This can't be done. But eventually, he ended up taking on the uh, the responsibility, the 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 actual project, and it went with a uh, uh, Deca. That's Dean Kamen's company that he founded, funded by DARPA. This project was funded by DARPA to the tune of like forty million dollars. I mean, huge investment on this. Uh, the robot arm. If you look at videos from about two thousand seven, two thousand eight, it looks pretty bare bones, a terrible pun, I guess, but it is a very primitive looking machine that can do some amazing stuff. The current uh, implementation is even more impressive in my mind. It looks really sleek. It has all of these abilities that people were hoping for when the project was first pitched. And uh, the FDA approved it for use back in 2014. Now we're seeing Deca talk about this actually coming to market by the end of this year. Wow. Um, and I uh, found it interesting how this, this in particular kind of translates those control signals. Tell us a little bit about how kind of those muscle movements are interpreted on this. Electromyogram sensors. What? Oh, EMG sensors. Okay. So, you know, our muscles, uh, actually our bodies very much depend upon electrochemical uh, communication, and you get these little electric fields and, and electric signals that are sent to make your muscles do things. Also, you know, if you ever come into contact with electricity, your muscles will do stuff you didn't intend it to. That's true. Well, EMG sensors, you put them on the skin, and they can detect m minute amounts of electricity that are going on in uh, muscle commands. So what you do is you have someone who has lost uh part or in, an entire arm, it's really, it's above the elbow for the Luke arm, which is different than from some other uh, bionic hands that are out there. And you attach sensors to the part of the arm that's, that's still there or to the shoulder, and you train the arm by having the person wearing it uh, practice moving certain muscles in what they have left. That becomes a command. It's sent to a processor in the arm, essentially a small computer. And the computer is trained that when you do a certain uh, muscle movement, it oh. means open the hand, close That's the cool. hand, rotate the wrist. Uh, on top of that, they actually have a secondary command system. It's uh, some sensors or some, some actuators, really, that are put into your shoes and you use that in order to uh, increase the number of features you can use, you can do with the arm. Because if you just relied on whatever muscle uh, signals you could send, you would have a functional but limited arm. And DECA really wanted to make sure 
that this could do pretty much the full range of motion that a, a human arm could do. In order to do that, they built in these switches so that you would be able to switch between different grip positions, stuff that we take for granted. Like totally. the fact, if you want to put your forefinger and your thumb together, that's one thing. But if you want to make a fist, that's something else. If you want to try and pick up a small item, that's another thing. So that's a way that you can switch between the different modes, really. Yeah, watching the video, you see it, you know, you see the arm used to pick up a grape. And it's, you know, no big deal, just picking up a grape, which would be yep. very easy to over, kind of overcompensate, let's say, with the hardware and squish it to pieces. But Right. Yeah. And, and they, it even has sensors on the fingertips that detect pressure. And then you have little motors to give haptic feedback. It's kind of like the the motor you have in a cell phone. It rumbles, and it, the intensity of that rumble increases as the grip pressure increases. So the person wearing the arm has an idea of how hard he or she is actually gripping this robotic uh, ah, hand. That is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Uh, have to imagine this is not an inexpensive endeavor. Do we have any ideas of, on pricing or at least a range of pricing when it's going to come out? The biggest guess I've seen, like they they – the guesses I've seen have ranged to a, up to $100,000. On the low end, you're still talking several thousands of dollars, maybe $10,000 at the lowest of the low end, but I can't imagine that this technology would hit that much. That being said, I, 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 can't, I wonder how many iterations the Luke Arm went through, considering how much technological advancement we've seen over the past decade. Keep in yeah. mind, this project's been in place for 10 years. And they had working arms they were showing off in 2007, 2008. So just looking at the the, the progress in computer power and, and battery life, you got to think that that's had an impact on the design. And, of course, the Luke arm's not the only one out there. There are also some other really uh, high-tech arms. There's uh, Johns Hopkins Modular Prosthetic Limb, there's eye limb. There's a couple of others that are pretty, pretty much on par in some ways to what uh, the Luke arm can do, but they use different methodologies. Some of them are only meant for people who have lost an arm below the elbow, right. and it won't work anywhere. Like if you've lost an arm above the elbow, then it wouldn't be applicable. Sure. So this is this is pretty. Pretty science fictiony stuff, and I love that they called it the Luke Arm, being yeah. a Star Wars fan. Pretty, pretty fantastic.